Hey gang, Muckle Boy here. Welcome back. So we're going to take a look at a range of different replays using uh, these AQ healer attacks. We're going to look at uh, some t some farming attacks using the that that Valkomatic composition that we that I've been running for some time now, which is uh, just those eight Valks, uh, eight giants, uh, four quakes to get at uh, to get at the core. Uh, the the plan with uh, with all of these attacks is always to put the AQ on top of uh, at least one of the air defenses, possibly even two of them, uh, wherever possible. But uh, while she's doing that, she's also clearing an entire corridor of a base, which uh, acts as one side of a funnel. It's, it's a it's a stopgap measure to make sure that uh, your troops don't path down that down into that direction. There's always the chance that they could path away, but uh, you know, in using this kind of sledgehammer approach to these bases, uh, it, it defeats a lot of the the ring base. Um, the ring base configurations where the you know you have that outer ring of defenses as well as the uh, the inner ring of trash in this particular case it, I mean there wasn't this is not one of those bases but uh, it does it does have a couple of those features and one of the things that does happen with this this attack a lot is that one you know so long as you can put your coring team on top of those infernos as quickly as possible that'll leave your healers free to go in and uh, and either recharge your troops or just keep the AQ up so that she can go into cleanup mode and take out the rest of the base and kind of as a uh, almost as a, as a consequence of, of going in and putting down those those key uh, those key defenses you, you usually end up with um, a cleanup team that just goes in to, to three star the base but that's always your objective is to put put your AQ on top of one of the air defenses as quickly as possible and this next replay uh, this was another kind of open base design with a compartmentalized core but uh, one of the things that one of the decisions that I made here was to keep the AQ as far away from the uh, infernos as long as possible and um, try to soak up a little bit of uh, that long those long range defenses uh, down in the bottom and you know this this Coming in through the north, she did not have a lot to uh, to threaten her. Plus, these were these were lower defenses, so I knew I had um, you know a lot of survivability up in the north, and and, and she had uh, tons of time to go in, uh, no walls to stop her to take out a lot of those defenses. And one of the things that I did do here was I came in through the southeast rather than through the northeast. And in retrospect, I should have come in through the northeast. Um, with uh, you know just a couple of troops on the bottom, that spacing down, uh, just th just kind of down on the southeast, that would have been enough to stop those troops from going further down to the south. And then uh, you know this was one of those this was one of those uh, raids where I did actually bring a freeze, but uh, you know I've kind of just dropped that freeze and uh, and and picked up a third rage. I find that it's more beneficial to have or, you know I can I can attack a wider range of bases with three rages rather than two rages and and just a single freeze. So, I mean, I can take down single target Inferno bases, mixed mode bases, definitely multi target base, multi target Inferno um, configurations for bases. So, then, yeah, again, as uh, almost as a consequence, with the air defenses so far apart, there's uh, they cannot um, defend against those healers in the core. There's no way for, uh, you know, there's no way for those air defenses to participate in the defense of the base, taking out those. Um, those AQ, excuse me, to take out those healers. So, you know, again, as a consequence, you go up into cleanup mode and a three star. Now, one of these um, other repl other replays. This comes in from this m past war. We were matched up against two TH 10.5s that ended up dropping the, their Eagle artilleries right after war started, or right before war started, and we only had TH 10s. Um, but thankfully, we we do have uh, some very interesting tactics for taking these bases down. The base here is a you know it's just another derivative of a of a Dragonflower base reconfigured for um, an Eagle artillery in the core, and this was the side that he chose to walk you know uh, well just taking a step back here uh, very easy lure on the northeast side nothing too crazy there but he did the um, the choice that he made was to walk the southwest wall and, and that the reason that was the case is because it's the furthest spot away from the infernos plus there's an air defense uh, within three four uh, within four tiles of, of that wall so uh, we know that we knew that we could clear that wall clear those pockets clear that air defense uh, with with that AQ healer team, and um, that would effectively take out the entire southwest wall. And then uh, one of the other things that Dirty ended up spotting here was uh, two jump points, two jump points that gave you access directly to the infernos, to the town hall, as well as the eagle, art eagle artillery. And you'll you will see that all come and develop in just uh, in just a few moments as as the AQ goes into um, into clearing mode. And one of the things that uh, almost always happens, at least at the outset, as, as far as um, 
your opening moves is uh, when you get about three point defenses on you plus a couple of splash defenses, you're gonna you're gonna start seeing a big drop in health. But once you get that rage down on top of her, the rage isn't so much for damage for the for the AQ. It's uh, it's it's for the healers to heal her back up to full and to keep her going while she continues to take down those defenses. And then once all of those point defenses are down, and, and I've taken on as many as five. Uh, she is, you know, that, that entire pocket is clear. So at this point, you're clear to start uh, with the other side of the funnel. Now that she's carved one side of the funnel, you drop your, your golems as well as your wizards over on the southeast side to start cutting that side of the funnel. And then here come the giants in just about a second. Um, I, I have a tendency to, to, to mix in giants with Valk. Sturdy likes to use uh, giants because there is such a high concentration of defenses here that they are going to, well, the giants are just going to use that chain of defenses to immediately move into the core, take down that, that air defense, take down that, that inferno, but most importantly, take down that uh, that eagle artillery. Now this is one base that would have uh, that that would have definitely benefited from at least one earthquake in the core because remember those earthquakes work on percentages, and in eagle artillery that's 4,000 hit points. Uh, you know 25% damage on that. Uh, you know it's a thousand hit points gone. It, it could definitely be a game changer with uh, with these def with these types of bases. So this is the approach that we've taken to uh, to taking out TH11s when we're faced with them. Uh, it, it, you, know, you always open with an AQ walk. Keep that range rage for when you hit that a pocket of of uh, point defenses, keep her as far away from the infernos as long as possible, and then uh, pick a string of defenses to to uh, to move your defense-led troops directly into the core. I mean, he absolutely murdered this base, uh, and I'd imagine that um, maybe with a couple of tweaks, he possibly could have even three-starred this base with uh, with this composition. And uh, you know, just really aggressive, really fantastic execution, and great job there, dirty. All right, so next couple of attacks we're going to look at. These were uh, again in high champs. These were in regular match making another nemesis base. Now I did take a slightly different approach to this attack. Um, notice here I'm, I'm coming in at a, kind of a broadside angle to the uh, to the infernos. Now the reason that that's the case is because I want to send my kill team, my core team, uh, directly into that single uh, single target inferno. Now one of the guesses or one of the gambles that I made on this base was that she would uh, traverse that wall and unfortunately what happened was she hit that uh, barracks and then she stopped and started to shoot her way in, which is okay still because she's got plenty of stuff to distract her and keep her out of range of those, um, those uh, out of getting broadsided by those infernos and stopping the healing effect. Uh, so as you can see there, I, my plan was to come in from the south. Uh, this, this plan would have just as easily worked coming in from the east. Uh, but uh, it didn't even make it didn't even make a difference. So as far as the um, the south breach is concerned, there's uh, um, two breach points. One comes in through the corner, and one comes in through the side. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of what happens in these attacks is just me just spamming that that second phase of the uh, the attack, and they just they just path into the core um, because you're using a mix of Valks and. Uh, and giants there. You know, the giants will, will cut a swath through those defenses, but the Valks will just... If you use the um, clan castle troops, that, that's one option for dragging your troops into the core, or your BK, or whatever. And then, uh, you know, while all, all of that is going on, the uh, the AQ still has not come into range of those, uh, those Infernos. I did pop my ability earlier on, anticipating that the single target Inferno would grab those Barbarians ahead of my Barbarian King. Which was also uh, which was also a key thing, and then uh, you know just like every single one of these attacks, once you get those infernos down, or at least put the AQ on a on a beeline for those infernos, she goes into cleanup mode, and uh, there, there's very little that that can stop her. Now one of the things that I do that it sort of happened as an accident initially was. Um, I request giants in my CC. I don't request the golem. I request the giants because uh, I want them all streaming in uh, from from one from one location. And what that forces me to do is keep one giant, potentially a couple of wizards, and at least one archer in the pocket. And I cannot tell you how many times that saved me on uh, you know botched attacks, going up against gimmick bases. Um, having having just those extra ranged troops at the end help both with the cleanup effort. But if you get in trouble and uh, you know you need that extra star for 50%, um, then 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 that's you know then then you'll have them. But in, like in every single one of these cases with uh, with these nemesis bases, if you um, you know, I've attacked them now from about four different angles, and in every in every scenario, so long as you can put your troops on top of that inferno very quickly, uh, and and keep your healers alive, uh, keep them out of range of those air defenses, you know, doing whatever you can to do to to target the the infernos as well as the air defenses, then uh, you you'll go on into cleanup mode, 
and uh, just three star the base as a consequence. So that's one, and we're going to take a look at one more, which is a, a weird base. Mm. All right, so uh, this last replay, uh, very interesting base. Um, I guess you would call this a moat base, uh, mixed mixed infernos. But uh, again, check it out. the 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 air defenses are three tiles back from the wall, so there's nothing to stop the air, the uh, the AQ from being able to access that air defense. And then you have a couple of choices with uh, breach points for this. Now, I decided in this particular case, uh, you know, there's so many different options with uh, what to do with the coring team. You know, do you make the AQ walk away from the coring team? Do you take the AQ and have her meet up with the coring team? Um, this is one of those cases where I, I just, you know, decided on the whim to have her meet up with the coring team. And a couple of things, a couple of interesting things that happened during that was that one of the questions that comes up with this composition is why don't you bring a heal? Because Valks, you know, they, they need that heal. And uh, that's absolutely a valid point. And what I've been finding is that uh, I bring five healers for one thing instead of four. You only really need four, but I bring five for a couple of different reasons, one of which being uh, one of those healers ends up tanking for the other four. And so long as you end up with about three or four, that's usually enough for your, your AQ to go into cleanup mode, provided your, your uh, coring team can go in and, and take out those uh, those infernos. And one of the other things that, that happens is that, uh, as you can see here, once the uh, once the healers meet up with the rest of the core and then those infernos now go down they're available to go in and heal so th that was as good as having a heal and obviously if they had survived long enough uh, that that would have been even better than heal in in that case and you know you don't really need uh, once once the infernos are down once at least two of those air defenses are down and, and your aq is on a trajectory to take out the uh, the other air defenses you re don't really need those valks for anything else uh, they've done their job, which was to go in and get that, get those infernos and put them down, which uh, clears the path or clears the way for your AQ to go in and clean up the rest of the base. And this is, you know, this is two, two just random bases in regular matchmaking, 30 seconds of planning, uh, with uh, you know a couple of considerations for placement. Uh, those, those considerations being try to keep her away from the infernos, as, uh, try to keep the AQ away from the infernos as long as possible, and then uh, you know use use those pocket troops to uh, to help on the cleanup effort. And um, in this particular case, having the AQ meet up with the coring team to go uh, and, and just just rampage through the base. So this was this was this one was a lot of fun. Uh, you're never really quite sure which bases this will work on, but this was you know just yet another base that I can add to the list of uh, bases that I've taken taken out. So thanks for tuning in.